This is a book called President Donald J. Trump, The Son of Man, The Christ. Now, somebody sent me a picture of this book at a Trump rally a while back. Apparently, the guy who wrote it, Helgard Muller, has been going to Trump rallies, passing a copy of his book out to everybody. Let me give you an idea of the premise of the argument here. In the Bible, there are two messianic roles. There's a son of God and the son of man. The son of God was obviously fulfilled by Jesus. He came to earth, died for your sins, and all of that other good stuff, right? The son of man is referred to in the Bible in a number of Old Testament books, the book of Daniel, I think, mentions the Son of Man, the book of Ezekiel, and some others. The Son of Man is supposed to be like a cosmic judge who comes along at the end, sparks Armageddon into existence, and judges all of the good people and the bad people, basically. The assumption is that Jesus is going to come back a second time, take control of the Israeli political system. That's why Israel needs to exist as a nation before Jesus could come back, because that's one of the requirements for the Son of Man, for somebody to be the Son of Man, and then spark Armageddon into place. That's the belief among standard Christianity. This guy's argument, Helgard Muller, is that America is the new Israel, that the Founding Fathers were descendants of the original Jews that came up through the Caucasus Mountains or whatever else. Complete nonsense, just totally made up. And that Trump took control of the political system in New Israel, which made him the son of man. So that is their argument for Trump being the second coming of Jesus. That's what this book is all about, so I wanted to give it a read. We've been reading it already. If you haven't seen the previous parts, don't sweat it. You don't have to see the others to understand what's happening in the current chapter. Do not believe literally a single fact, a single statistic, a single word out of this guy's mouth. Just based on what I've already read, even the most basic facts like the names of political parties or the translation of words are wrong. He lies about them constantly. So before you believe a single thing out of this book, make sure you fact check it. And one more thing before we actually get into the book, some of it can be pretty graphic. The guy is a rabid racist, does not like the black community, grew up in South Africa during the period of segregation called apartheid, and is very obviously an extremely hateful person. So just be aware of that before walking into the book. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is chapter 16 of President Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ, by Helgard Muller. President Donald John Trump and his followers will be hated and persecuted for his name's sake. If you didn't see the previous chapter, we left off, or chapters, I guess, plural, we left off, he was kind of giving us some reasons for why he believes that Donald Trump is the Son of Man, the Christ, rather than any other president, you know, or any other person like Mike Pence or, or Obama or whoever else. Uh, so far, the reasons that he's listed, he's given us about eight of them so far. I've been keeping track. Trump is a D-bag. That's one of his reasons. Jesus was not a D-bag. Trump is. And the Son of Man is, in this guy's mind, the exact polar opposite of, the, um, of Jesus. If he's the polar opposite of Jesus, then he's the Son of Man, apparently. So, Trump is a D-bag was his first reason. The tablets that Moses walked down from the mount broke, and he went back up for a second set. That's reason number two, that he believes that Trump is the Messiah. I know it doesn't make sense. I know. It, don't blame me. Don't blame the messenger. It makes no sense to anybody, but that's the reason he cited. The name Donald means world ruler. The word Bible means two lords. That one is not true at all. Trump's dad's middle name was Christ. Again, I don't see why that matters. Christ is actually a really common name in Germany, where he was from. Trump's mom's name is Mary. Again, circumstantial, coincidental, like, I don't know why that matters. Nehemiah wanted to build a wall. Trump wanted to build a wall, too. Don't know why any of this matters, but in this guy's head, it means Trump is the Messiah. And finally, Trump's last name is Trump, like trumpet. There are the, there are the reasons, if you missed them before. So let's read chapter 16, see what he has to say for himself here. The mainstream media has hatred and bias against Donald Trump. If Trump derangement syndrome, or TDS, had a face, it was the fake media like CNN, MSNBC, etc., 
The mainstream media never reports on any of the positive and great things Donald Trump has done for America and the world. Like what? What has he done that's so great? I assume he's going to tell us, right? It's all about hatred and never getting over losing the 2016 election. There are still many closet Trump supporters. Many citizens stay quiet and keep their views to themselves in fears of violence by Democrats and other left-wing organizations. Some keep quiet in fear of losing their jobs and even to keep peace with family and friends. The left, mainstream media, and Hollywood elite have become unhinged and intolerant with anyone who disagrees with them. Liberals used to be tolerant and free thinkers. Not anymore. George Clooney... Jennifer Lawrence and dozens of other celebrities, why is celebrities highlighted here, that's weird, have spoken out against Donald Trump, once again highlighted. Why in italics? Just bizarre, man. Hate against Donald Trump, his family, and his supporters gets swept under the rug. Attacks against individuals wearing Make America Great Again hats have failed to make it to the national news media cycle. Wow, okay. Such a victim, right? My God, this poor guy. So victimized constantly. You know what I find particularly interesting about this, you know, people wearing MAGA hats thing? Let me show you guys a little clip from somebody that I respect a great deal. This is a guy named Bo of the Fifth Column. Uh, I don't actually know him personally, but he's a really cool guy. Uh, I love some of his videos. Really, really interesting. And he does a good job of drawing parallels and trying to bring people to conclusions about things in a non-confrontational way. So listen to him break down the MAGA hat thing. Well, howdy there, Internet people. This is Bo again. So we got to talk about MAGA hats tonight. <laughs> um, I had one conversation, and it changed my entire view of them. I, I was actually going to buy one tonight to wear during this, but I, I couldn't find one I could buy. I'm not joking. This isn't one of my sarcastic lead-ins. I am dead serious. Um, if you don't know, there's an app out now so the MAGA hat crowd can find harassment-free places that they can go and eat or drink or shop or whatever. Poor snowflakes, right? So mistreated, these MAGA people. Oh, they're so persecuted. I found this funny, <clears throat> and I made a post on my personal social media saying that I had just marked the punk bar over in Fort Walton as a MAGA-friendly establishment. If there is a place around here where you're pretty much guaranteed to catch a brick to the forehead for wearing one of those hats, it's there. I had a guy message me and tell me that he was disappointed in me because I don't know what it's like to wear one of those hats. <laughs> I'm like, okay, do tell. <laughs> so he tells me five little things. Completely changed my view. Completely. I mean, instantly. So he says it, and first thing you need to know is that we are in MAGA country down here. This is, this is, <laughs> I mean. Dude lives in Florida. If you're not familiar with his channel or his work or whatever, he, he's a Floridian. And yeah, it's MAGA city down there. Jesus Christ. This is a Trump supporting area. But if he puts his hat on and goes into town, people will stare at him, sneer. They don't say anything. They don't do anything. But they just look at him like he's trash. And I'm like, nah, I know I'm one of them. <laughs> then he told me this story about coming out of the Target. And he was in the parking lot pushing his buggy and somebody rolled by and yelled, bigot. He didn't know if he was going to be able to make it to his car before they made it to him if they decided to stop and get out. That's a little scary. Well, what are the chances, realistically, that someone's going to get out of their car and try to start shit with you if they yell bigot or something, right? Probably not very high. But you don't know for sure, right? And it, it's scary to be the target of things like that. It is scary. I know. I've been the target of this kind of thing before. Um, but, but we'll get there. Keep listening. He was in a bar talking about Trump in a positive light. I guess he said MAGA a couple of times. And the manager of the establishment came over to him and told him to speak in a way that was friendlier to the rest of the guests. He went into the little Mexican store down in Panama City and they served him, but they made sure to tell him not to wear it in there again. He said that so many things like that have happened to him over the last year or so, he doesn't even want to wear it anymore. Man, there is a whole lot to unpack there. So let's get started. Those stares, those sneers, those are the microaggressions you've been saying don't exist. They are very real, and now you've experienced them. Being in a parking lot, that whole story, I would imagine that's a whole lot like the people that roll by Home Depot and yell, I'm calling immigration. You got papers? It's just a joke. You're not hurting anybody. Didn't mean to scare anyone. The point is, this is what a microaggression is.
and these people, the MAGA crowd, uh, not just the MAGA crowd, but like Helgard Muller, the writer of this book, the guy that seems to believe that Trump is the Messiah. He's spent the past, I don't know, what, 40 years? I don't know how old he is. 40 years railing against microaggressions and saying people are snowflakes and they're weak and microaggressions aren't real and all this other garbage, right? And suddenly, interestingly enough, he suddenly understands what microaggressions are. How about that? I guess he just rejects the concept of microaggressions when it's inconvenient to him to believe that they are real, that they actually exist and hurt people. Anyway, let's keep reading the book here. Many countries have nominated President Trump for Nobel Peace Prize awards. You hardly ever hear about this one. Uh, I'm sorry. You ever, hardly ever hear about this on the network news or talk shows. One of the countries is Australia. Okay, for what? Why would somebody nominate Donald Trump for a Nobel Peace Prize, first of all? And second, no, they didn't. I believe, like, one guy put his name in the running for a Nobel Peace Prize. He did not deserve it. Arguably, even Obama didn't deserve it. Only, like, four U.S. presidents have ever received the Nobel Peace Prize. This is a guy named Elie Wiesel, I think is his is how it's pronounced. He wrote a book named Night. I read this book recently. It was about his experience in Auschwitz, in a death camp during the Holocaust. He survived it, barely. He was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, and he won it. He deserved it because he wrote the book Night, which inspired people to care, to do everything that they could to prevent that kind of thing from happening again. And he worked in political circles to try to encourage peace between Israel and Palestine and uh, worked to improve conditions in apartheid Africa to get Nelson Mandela out of jail. I mean, he did all kinds of helpful stuff. Elie Wiesel did. He won the Nobel Peace Prize. He deserved it. What did Trump do to improve peace in the world? Nothing. He did nothing. Check out this short clip of Elie Wiesel from his Nobel Peace Prize speech, his acceptance speech or whatever. It's truly incredible. That I have tried to fight those who forget because, as you have said, if we forget, we are guilty. We are accomplices. We could not prevent their death the first time. But if we forget them, they will be killed the second time. And this time, it will be our responsibility. We must speak. We must take sides. For neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Sometimes we must interfere. When human lives are endangered, when human dignity is in jeopardy, national borders and sensitivities become irrelevant. Wherever men or women are persecuted because of their race, religion, or political views, that place must at that moment, become the center of the universe. The guy is as profound as they come. It, the book is so good. Night by Ellie Wiesel. You need to read that book if you haven't. It's not even that long. Uh, it's pretty short. And oh, it is an absolutely incredible book. And the speech, the acceptance speech, is only 20 minutes long total. You should give that a read, too, if you want. It's on YouTube. E-L-I-E-W-I-E-Z-E-L -E 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 is his name. So let's find out if Trump really was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize by Australia. Okay, according to this BBC article, he was nominated twice. A far-right Norwegian politician has put Mr. Trump's name forward for the 2021 prize, citing the president's role in the recent peace deal between Israel and the, U and the United Arab Emirates. Yeah, that wasn't a peace deal, really. That was just an attempt to get Middle Eastern countries to work with Israel. They were already working with Israel behind the scenes, kind of under the table, if you will. So Trump 
put forward the, what I think is called the Abraham Accords. Somebody correct me in the comments if this is wrong. I'll pin it to the top. Basically, Donald Trump started sending money, taxpayer money, to countries like the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia to convince them to, he was bribing them to trade with Israel, just do regular trade with Israel. That's not peace in the Middle East. That's bribing countries to do trade deals with them. That's it. From my pocket, from your pocket, Israel and Palestine are still fighting. They have been for decades. That's not worthy of a, a Nobel Peace Prize. Anyway, like I said, Obama probably didn't even deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. Trump certainly didn't. Anyway, let's keep reading. Christian Tybring Jetty told Fox News on Wednesday, for his merit, I think he's done more trying to create peace between nations than most other Peace Prize nominees. No, that's disgusting for somebody to even suggest such a thing. Adding that he was not a big Trump supporter, he added, the committee should look at the facts and judge him on the facts, not on the way he behaves sometimes. Well, the way he behaves is what's, you know, at issue here. We want him to promote peace. If he's not promoting peace in the way he behaves, he doesn't deserve the prize. Are you kidding me? Trump was nominated once before. For the second time, he has Mr. Tybring Getty to think. In 2018, the right-wing politician was one of two Norwegian lawmakers to nominate Mr. Trump for the same prize, then for his efforts to bring reconciliation to North and South Korea. Mr. Trump did not take home the prize that year, but Mr. Tybring Getty, I think, I assume is how it's pronounced, a member of the Conservative Progress Party, insists the U.S. president meets the criteria this time. No, he never did, and he never will. Trump will never meet the criteria for a peace prize. And if he ever does get a peace prize, it will just show how truly worthless the prize is at that point. It's like the, what's that prize that the president can give out? The highest civilian honor, U.S. It's called the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Trump gave it to Rush Limbaugh. It's worthless now. It is worth nothing since Rush Limbaugh got that Medal of Honor. Now, the, the Nobel Prize is not worthless yet. It's, uh, I feel it still has honor in it. But the moment they give it to Trump, it's worthless. All right, let's keep reading here. So I have no idea what he's talking about when he says one of the countries is Australia. No, it was a single politician that put his name up twice. Uh, no clue who he's referring to here or whatever, but, you know. No one ever accused the writer of this book of being honest or knowledgeable, so... It's a common place for President Donald Trump's critics to indict him and his followers of blatant racism and even of being white supremacists. Well, not for nothing, but this guy is actually a white supremacist. Like, you know, there's some level of debate you can engage in about Trump or about any of his followers or whatever else. This guy is a white supremacist. He's from South Africa and longs for the days when black people in South Africa were basically forced to separate. They, they lived in their own separate little state. Segregation was still very active. It was viewed as one of the worst things in human history alongside slavery and the Holocaust. It, in fact, what this guy is discussing here, white supremacy and apartheid South Africa and stuff, was actually discussed by Elie Wiesel, the guy I mentioned earlier, during his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. No joke. As one of those grotesque, evil things that human beings have done in our history. And this guy, the writer of this book, is actually in favor of it. Absolutely disconnected from reality. An emerging theme among many liberals follows this reasoning. Trump is a racist. If you still support him, so are you. People have talked about Trump breaking norms, especially when it comes to speaking about race, going as far as to say that he's the most racist president in modern history. Okay, I've never heard that, and I don't have any reason to say that either. There are some real whoppers of presidents out there that we've had. Reagan was a deeply racist human being. He was terrible, dude. He was a terrible hateful, awful person. Now, did he ever come out and 
explicitly say things that were deeply racist or wrong or whatever. Not really. But you can look at his policy and, and see the results of the racism coming through in his policy. Talking about welfare queens, driving Cadillacs on the state's dime, and all kinds of other nonsense. And not to mention what Reagan did to the LGBT community. A brand new pandemic emerges, HIV, AIDS. We know nothing about it except that it's affecting the LGBT community. And what does Reagan do? Nothing. He does nothing. He lets it spread. Fantastic. Kill two birds with one stone, right? Take out the LGBT community and the drug addict community. Perfect in Reagan's eyes. Yeah, he was terrible. He was an awful person. I would not say that Trump is the most racist president in modern history. That's kind of absurd. He dog whistles to racists. He brings racists into his movement. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. But saying that he's the most racist in modern history, I don't think so. This guy just lives in his own little world. A second odd thing happened amid Trump's attempts to reverse the election result. Corporate America turned on him. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, this guy seems to be admitting that Trump attempted to reverse the election results. That's actually really interesting that he admits it here, openly. Hundreds of major business leaders, many of whom had backed Trump's candidacy and supported his policies, called on him to concede. Several large banks and the PGA? I don't, I don't know what PGA is are among those that have disassociated themselves from the president and his allies since January 6, 2021. Rightfully so. I don't know what he's talking about, large banks and PGA, but yeah, people dropped Trump like a hot potato. They want nothing to do with that. He's a, a hot mess. A growing number of companies and institutions have taken actions against former President Donald Trump and his associates since January 6th. Social media companies barred Mr. Trump from their platforms. Universities stripped him of honorary degrees. Major banks paused political contributions. And the PGA of America said it would no longer hold the 2022 PGA Championship at the Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster, New Jersey. Didn't that happen? I, this does not sound right to me. I'm not even sure what he's talking about here. But okay, I guess. Yeah, look, this is free speech, baby. That's what it's all about. I, you have the right to say and do what you want, including fomenting an insurrection against the U.S. government, and I and the PGA and big banks and whoever else have the right to not deal with you anymore if we don't want. That's our free speech right. You don't have a right to force us to work with you if we don't want or like you or whatever. People don't understand what free speech is. Trump supporters were banned from flying on January 6, 2021. No, they were not. Some people were put on no-fly lists because they're domestic terrorists. That does not mean they were banned from flying uh, as a demographic, as a group. Trump supporters, all. That's ridiculous. And others lost their jobs because they are Trump supporters. No, they lost them because they're terrorists. There were 74 million people who voted for Donald Trump in 2020. 81 million, give or take, voted for Biden. 74 million people were not put on no-fly lists. 74 million people were not fired from their jobs. It was the ones that are actual full-blown domestic terrorists. And that was totally justified. But, okay, keep playing the victim card, I guess, right? On several occasions, Antifa and Black Lives Matter groups attacked Trump supporters. Okay, can you give me those occasions? Tell me which occasions you're referring to specifically and give me specific sources from AP News, BBC, or Reuters. One of those three sources. You know, there was this whole thing back a couple of years ago about Black Lives Matter rioting, burning down cities, Antifa burning down cities and all this other stuff. And I came to find that that was, by and large, completely made up. I live in New York City. This city is not falling apart. It's the safest and cleanest that it has been in maybe ever. New York City is not a shithole. Portland, Oregon is not a disaster area. Black Lives Matter and Antifa are not burning things down. Never were. All I need is evidence. Show me evidence from one of those three sources and I will believe it. Until I get evidence from one of those three sources, I'm going to assume you're full of shit. 
All of this reminded me of Matthew 10, 18, and 22, Matthew 24, blah, 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 and he goes through a bunch of Bible verses. That the Jewish media and the leftists will hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you, you cast out your name as evil for Donald Trump's sake. Luke 6.22. Wow, does Luke 6.22 really say that the Jewish media controls everything and that people are going to have to throw out their name for Trump's sake? What a ridiculous... God, this guy is just ridiculous from beginning to end. Where is his head? As soon as you are affiliated with the name of Trump, you shall be hated and be persecuted for his name's sake. Do you see the comparisons according to the parables and teachings of the Son of God when it comes to the Son of Man, President Donald J. Trump? Not really. Not really, no. I don't. The name of the Lord or the name of God always refers to the five gods of the Bible, and nowhere in the Bible refers it to a trinity? I'm sorry, that doesn't really fully make sense. The word name in the Bible means family or the lineage of one family. Okay, I, hard doubt. I don't know what he's talking about here. You know, honestly, the only parts of this book that are actually trustworthy are the ones that he straight up plagiarizes word for word from Wikipedia. So I, I can never tell if this is like a section that he's straight up plagiarizing from Wikipedia like he did that one time not too long ago about the name Donald. I can't tell if this is one of those sections or if he's just making shit up because he just makes shit up regularly too. Before Jacob died, he asked Joseph that his name be named on the children of Joseph, according to Genesis 48. God's family name is Yahweh, according to Exodus 3. When God said unto Moses that Yahweh has sent him and that God's name is Yahweh, God actually meant that he has a family which is called Yahweh. Yahweh is a four-letter Hebrew word. There are four different Yahwehs in the book of Exodus, which are the cloud, the pillar of cloud, the pillar of fire, and Moses. What? This is complete nonsense. Is he saying that Yahweh is just God's last name? Like Jehovah Yahweh? First name Jehovah, last name Yahweh? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. What God said unto Moses, according to Exodus 3, is that these four different Yahwehs are God's direct family, which are his mother, who is the queen of heaven, his father, who is the most high, and God's two brothers, the son of God and the lamb. What? These five individual gods are the holy name, exclamation mark. You would see that the word name, according to 1 Samuel 24, refers to family and not to the word name, okay? When Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, that you shall be hated by all men for my name's sake, Jesus meant, in fact, that the word, I'm sorry, in fact, that the world shall hate you for my family's sake, which are the five gods of the Bible. Again, yeah, he wrote a book called The Five Gods of the Bible. I don't understand what he's talking about or what he means or whatever. It's all nonsense beginning to end, honestly. And it just, it, it blows me away that anybody believes this. When you see how the Jewish media, again, attacking the Jews, why? Why does he hate Jews so much? It blows me away. Yo, I wonder how this guy feels about Kanye West. I bet this dude loves Kanye West. Seriously, I bet he does. If you are unaware of what's happening with Kanye right now, because you're watching this like five years in the future or something, let me just show you what Kanye West said recently. Just I like two weeks ago or something, Kanye said this on Alex Jones's program. Can we just kind of say like you like the you like the uniforms, but that's about no, it. No, we we no. I, there, there's a lot of things that I love about Hitler. A lot of things. Yeah, that's not fantastic. And like I said, Kanye basically agrees with everything that this guy has said so far, especially about the Jewish media and the Jewish banks and all that. I would put money on it that this guy loves Kanye West. When you see how the Jewish media, the liberals, and the Democrats, a.k.a. demons, spewed hate on the name slash family of Donald Trump and how they've been treated by these demons or Democrats, who, well, we reversed it this time, you must understand that Trump is fulfilling the scriptures according to Matthew 8. Therefore, whosoever shall call upon the family, or the name, in parentheses, of Trump shall be saved. Whoever believes will be saved, but, who, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Wow, dude. This guy is literally 
quoting a Bible verse and inserting Donald Trump's name into it. No fucking joke. Whoever calls upon the name of Trump will be saved. That is nuts. Oh my God, dude. This guy is absolutely unhinged. I'll tell you this. I'll say the exact same thing that I I said many times before. If, If God believes or if God stands for the things that he purports to stand for, I want nothing to do with him. I don't want anything to do with a God that would spread the vile hatred that evangelicals, particularly this guy, believe. If Donald Trump is God, I'm good. I want nothing to do with it. Send me to hell. I'm happy there. All right, let's read the next one. Chapter 17. President Donald John Trump and his followers banned from the Jewish synagogues. Oh, okay. Remember, this guy believes that Jews are like some evil cabal that's running the world like puppet masters or some other shit. Oh, and this book, I think, came out in late 2021 for what it's worth. So it's before Elon Musk took it over. Twitter officially announced that President Donald Trump's account has been permanently suspended after close review of recent tweets from real Donald Trump and the context around them. Twitter has permanently suspended the account due to the risk of further incitement of violence, the social media company stated in a tweet thread. In the context of horrific events the week of January 6, 2021, Twitter made it clear that additional violations of the Twitter rules would potentially result in this very course of action. Twitter's decision to remove Trump from its platform comes 48 hours after Trump supporters violently stormed the Capitol on January 6th, Wednesday afternoon. So Twitter claimed. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought the guy was like defining January 6th as the violent event that it was. And I was surprised for a second. No, he's just describing it the way that uh, the others did. Okay. Trump was booted off most major social media platforms on January 6, 2021, after his supporters marched on the Capitol. He then told them that he loved them in the hours following the deadly riot. That's true. Trump did say that to his um, rioters, to his insurrectionists. Twitter permanently banned President Trump after the riot, while Facebook initially suspended him for an indefinite length of time, citing the risk of further incitement of violence. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube then took the unprecedented step of kicking the then-sitting U.S. president off their services. Yep, that's true. All of that is accurate. When Facebook and Twitter barred Donald Trump from their platforms after the Capitol riot in January, he lost direct access to most to his most powerful megaphones. That's fair enough. That's true. I agree. Well, his most powerful megaphone at that moment was actually the press because he was still, as the president, He has a room that he can walk into that has cameras that are live, basically 24-7. He can, uh, all he needs to do is walk into this room that's off like the West Wing or whatever, stand in front of the cameras, turn them on, and start talking. And, you know, just like that, news companies will cover it. That is, that's been part of the president's right for like ever. Since, like, a really, really long time. So, anyway. That was technically his most powerful megaphone. But that's neither here nor there. Facebook said the former president would not be allowed back on its service until at least January 2023, citing a risk to public safety. So, a year. They suspended him for a year, basically, is what that's saying. No, no, I'm sorry. Two years. Yeah, two years. Have you seen how these Jewish synagogues ban people for speaking out the truth? Uh, no, I haven't. These people, Jews, oh, this isn't going to end well, is it? (laughs) This is about to get really crazy. These people, Jews, don't have the truth within them, and therefore they only allow lies on their social media. Wow. So the people who run Twitter are Jews, apparently, who lie. Okay. Jesus was right about these Jewish synagogues that they will put you out or ban for speaking the truth for their father is a liar, according to John 844. Oh my God, dude. This guy really doesn't like Jewish people. This is insane. This is straight up insane. Tens of thousands of Trump supporters were banned from social media because they did not like the smell of the Republicans or Esau. Okay. Now Republicans are considered Esau? Trump supporters were banned from flights, restaurants, families, and friends. No, no, they weren't. Domestic terrorists were. 74 million people voted for Trump. 74 million people were not banned from social events, 
restaurants, planes. It wasn't Trump supporters that were targeted. It was domestic terrorists, specifically a very small subset of Trump voters, a subset which I'm sure he identifies with, which is why he's complaining. It was an historical moment in time where the followers of Trump were prosecuted for his namesake. They were prosecuted for his namesake? Like, sent through the judicial system? Forced to face legal consequences and put in jail for his namesake? Okay. So it it moved from they were all Trump supporters were put on no-fly lists and all Trump supporters are banned from restaurants and family, and it moved to all Trump supporters were sent through the judicial system for supporting him. No. Some publishers canceled their contracts with Trump authors. Others lost their jobs and income because they followed Trump. This is completely made up. If you're a domestic terrorist, you faced social consequences for that. That's just what it is. That's how it goes. Welcome to reality, buddy. I was in Baltimore, Maryland between the election of 2020 and the inauguration 2021 when I saw these people who were banned from all sorts of platforms and areas by the liberals and corporations and the Jews, right? Secretly the Jews. And people who got prosecuted because of Trump's name. I undoubtedly knew that the Christ revealed himself to the world. Mr. Donald J. Trump and the world hated him, for they have not loved him. He's calling Donald Trump the Christ. This is insane. When I saw how the Jews banned Trump from their social networks like Facebook, YouTube, Google, and also banned his family and, and his supporters, I instinctively remembered John 16, 2-4, which to me is another concrete... Wait. Which to me is another concrete evidence of the Christ? Okay... The synagogues, or media and social media, belonged to Jews. So Twitter is like a synagogue. Then why is he on it? Isn't that false worship if he's on Twitter? The Jewish synagogues, which Jesus mentions in the four Gospels, are nothing but a parable or a comparison to the Jewish-owned, one word, Jewish-owned, J-E-W-I-S-H-O-W-N-E-D, No space, no punctuation, just Jewish-owned. Okay, I've never heard that word before. It's interesting, though. has real zip to it, right? A parable or a comparison to the Jewish-owned media corporations and big tech like Facebook, Twitter, Google, and YouTube. Jesus, dude, this guy is something else. Mark Elliott Zuckerberg is an American media magnate, internet entrepreneur, and philanthropist. How much you want to bet this is plagiarized from Wikipedia? Earlier in the book, he straight up plagiarized something straight from Wikipedia. I'd be willing to bet this is from the Mark Zuckerberg Wikipedia page. Let's see. How did I know? What are the chances? How about that, right? Straight from Wikipedia. Plagiarized straight from Wikipedia. Let's, Let's just put them side by side. Here it is right here. Mark Elliott Zuckerberg is an American media magnate, internet entrepreneur, and philanthropist. And here's the Wikipedia page. Mark Elliott Zuckerberg is an American business magnate, internet entrepreneur, and philanthropist. He is known for co-founding the social media website Facebook and its parent company Meta Platforms. Oh, I get, this is probably from before they changed their name to Meta. And serves as its chairman, chief executive officer, and controlling shareholder. Mark Zuckerberg was raised in a reformed Jewish household, and his ancestors hailed from Germany, Austria, and Poland. He had a Star Wars-themed bar mitzvah when he, was, when he turned 13. That's actually really cool. Yep. Yeah, look, you can see they added the Meta Platforms bit after the fact. This is straight-up plagiarized right from Wikipedia. I don't see anything about Star Wars, though. Bar... Wait, did he just make up the Jewish piece? Okay, I'm seeing a couple of, I'm seeing like one mention of Judaism, Reformed Jewish. Okay, right here. Uh, I think this is where he plagiarized from this Wikipedia page. Early life section from Wikipedia. It says, he and his three sisters were raised in a Reformed Jewish household in Dobbs Ferry, New York. His great-grandparents were Jewish emigrants from Austria, Germany, and Poland, He attended high school at Ardsley High School before transferring to Phillips Exeter Academy. He's captain of the fencing team. Wow, that's pretty metal. 
I'm not seeing this bit about Star Wars theme bar mitzvah when he turned 13. I'm not seeing anything about a bar mitzvah. This is very, very obviously plagiarized straight from Wikipedia, though, right? Can we agree that this is just straight up plagiarism from Wikipedia? Absolutely ridiculous, dude. Yeah, just plagiarized right out of Wikipedia. That's insane. Google in full, Google LLC, formerly Google Inc., 1998 to 2017, American search engine company founded in 1998 by Sergey Brin and Larry Page. You want to bet that this is also plagiarized from Wikipedia? Is an American multinational technology company focusing on research en- or focusing on search engine technology, online advertising? Uh, maybe it's not from the Google page. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I see what he's doing here. He's trying to make it clear that all of the people who... Oh, my God. He's going full Kanye right now, isn't he? He's trying to make a point that everybody in the tech world who who created these platforms has some connection to Judaism. Who cares? It's like there are a lot of black people in Ferguson, Missouri. It doesn't mean they run the place or that there's some cabal pulling strings behind the scenes in some sinister way, trying to control everything and everybody around them. This is just absurd. An American search engine company founded in 1998 by Sergey Brin and Larry Page that is, subs- that is a subsidiary of the holding company Alphabet Inc. Larry Page was born on March 26, 1973 in Lansing, Michigan. His mother is Jewish. His maternal grandfather later immigrated to Israel. Sergey Mikhail- Mikhailovich? Bryn is a Jewish Russian American computer scientist most famous for co founding internet giant Google. Who cares? Can't people have like ancestral roots to another ethnic group? Is that not okay? These people see monsters around every corner, honestly. Susan Diane Wojcicki is an American Polish business executive who's a CEO of YouTube. Yeah, she is the CEO of YouTube, Wojcicki. Um, she, when I got my my silver play button, it came with a letter from Susan Wojcicki, signed by Susan. I mean, it's auto pen. Probably she had nothing to do with it, but you know, it said this is an amazing achievement, blah blah blah, and it has her signature at the bottom, so it's pretty cool. Wojcicki was involved in the founding of Google and became Google's first marketing manager in '99. Susan Diane Wojcicki was born on July 5th, 1968, to Esther Wojcicki an educator of Jewish descent. Who cares? What is this guy's obsession with Jews? And Stanley Wojcicki, a Polish-American physics professor at Stanford University. She has two sisters, Janet Wojcicki. This is straight out of Wikipedia too, isn't it? I bet it is. Janet Wojcicki, PhD anthropologist and epidemiologist, and Ann Wojcicki, founder of 23andMe. Is this true? Again, I can't tell if this is one of the things that he completely made up or if this is straight plagiarized from somewhere. That's the there it doesn't come in any other form with this guy. Either it's made up or it's plagiarized. Most of these social media platforms or synagogues belong to Jews and liberals. They decide who they ban from their synagogues, social media platforms, just according to how Jesus predicted and prophesied about the Jews in John 9. Okay, let me read it exactly as it's written. About the Jews in John 9.22 that will ban non-Jews and Republicans. That doesn't really make sense, but okay. The Jews who own most of the media and the social media and Hollywood do not like it when you speak openly about President Donald J. Trump, just like the Jews did not like it when people spoke openly about Jesus, the Son of God. This guy is absolutely unhinged. Absolutely unhinged. President Donald Trump blamed big tech companies on January 12, 2021, six days after January 6th, for dividing the country days after Twitter and Facebook banned him on their platforms for encouraging the attack on the U.S. Capitol building. Yeah, Twitter was to blame for dividing the country six days after an insurrection on the Capitol. 100%. That checks out. Jesus said how it is written of the Son of Man, President Trump, that he must suffer many things and be sat at naught. And be set at naught. God, it, it is hard to wade through what he's saying here. President Donald Trump suffered many things and was set at naught when the election was stolen from him by the Jewish media, the liberals, Big Tech, and Mike Pence. Jesus, dude. 
I think that big tech is doing a horrible thing for our country and to our country, and I believe it's going to be a catastrophic mistake for them. This is a quote, obviously, from Trump. They're dividing and divisive, Trump told reporters at the start of a trip to Texas. Isn't that redundant, dividing and divisive? Don't they mean the same thing, basically? He said the companies had made a terrible mistake and that there is a counter move to the actions big tech platforms have taken without being specific about what that means. And lo and behold, absolutely nothing happened. He created his own tech platform, Truth Social or Truth Central or whatever the hell it is. Congratulations. Twitter, Facebook, Alphabet Inc. owned Google. Apple Inc. and Amazon.com Inc. took their strongest actions yet against Trump to limit his reach since January 6, 2021. They cited the potential for continued violence stemming from the Republican president's posts after his supporters' January 6 assault on the U.S. Capitol that killed five people. This has to be a quote. This has to be plagiarized. Again, either he makes something up and it's framed from a position that would be beneficial to him and to Donald Trump, or he straight plagiarizes something. This is not framed positively toward Trump, so it must be plagiarized from somewhere. I, that's just my deductive reasoning. Apple, Google, and Amazon also suspended Parler, a pro-Trump app where they claim that users have threatened more violence from their respective app stores and web hosting services. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, Parler was contributing to all of this at the time, and they were right to remove it from app stores. The moves enraged Trump, who immediately vowed he would not be silenced and promised a big announcement soon. He, I guess he didn't have Troth Central or Central at the time, but yeah, now he has his own social media thing. Trump has repeatedly clashed with large tech companies and railed against the protections they enjoy under the law called Section 230, which protects companies from liability over content posted by users. Yeah, that's accurate. Uh, Actually, that's an accurate description of Section 230. It protects companies from being sued for posting or for allowing people to post things of their own accord. So basically... Trump threatened to remove Section 230 from existence in retaliation against tech companies. Not realizing, question mark, maybe he did realize this. This would not solve his problem. This would not make it so he can post whatever he wants. It'd make it worse. It means that tech companies can be sued if they don't remove things that, you know, are violent or hateful or illegal or whatever else. So they would have to put a disproportionate amount of time and money into moderation even more time and money into moderation than they are now it would make it worse for trump not better it was only a retaliatory move to talk about section 230 that's it so i'm really not sure why this you know was so popular among trump supporters removing section 230 this is objectively bad for free speech and for trump and his supporters He has continued to demand that law be repealed, even though his calls have not found enough congressional support. It would be ridiculous to remove that. He even vetoed a $740 billion defense bill that allocates military funds each year because the bill did not include language to overturn Section 230. Congress overrode the veto. Just ridiculous. Donald Trump is a ridiculous human being in every way. He's terrible in every way. Oh, my God, dude. Chapter 18, President Donald John Trump and the fake media. It's just getting more and more bizarre from this point. It's getting crazier. We got through a section of this book that was dry as it as it gets. It was so boring. The things the guy was saying made no sense at all. The words he was using were technically words and couldn't sit next to each other in a sentence, but didn't make sense in that context. And it was like, I don't know. Five hours of that. Now it's starting to get wild. This is just crazy, dude. Let me know what you think about this in the comments.